60 days is all it's going to take for us to make you the best version of yourself that you've ever had. And I know that that can sound overwhelming or perhaps impossible, but I know exactly where you are right now. You lack focus and you lack clarity. That's what we're going to help you with in this video. We're going to provide you four different domains to really, really, really put your focus on in order to ensure that you can curate a life that is aligned to you. The true values of you can shine in these four domains. You see, right now, you're constantly going through this toxic, cyclic behavior of you have this great ambition within you. Let's be honest, you're not watching my content if you're not somebody that shares those same types of effort as me or this idea that we look around us and we want something more. I know that that is you right now, so you can imagine if we're looking at a circle, you're at that top right there of, I know that I'm meant for something more. I have this inkling inside of me that's telling me that I got to go do something. And then we know in our society today that there's a plethora of constant distraction. So it makes you unfocused. So that's the next step. And then you lose track of what it is that your ambition is meant for. Then you start to feel guilty because you look around your situation year after year and you realize that you're in the same exact situation as you were every year prior. And that fourth part is then you saying, you know what, because I'm constantly in this overwhelming sense of guilt, I'm gonna to continue to procrastinate in all my endeavors. And then you get back to the top of the circle when something motivates you that you see online, you're like, yes, now this is it. This is my calling. I I'm now meant for something more. And you just constantly in the cyclic behavior of never taking action, feeling guilty about it. And that's what I'm going to stop you from doing again. Being the best version of yourself doesn't mean that it needs to be overly complex. It just needs to be energies that we are constantly focusing upon, right? The energy of these four domains are going to ensure that you can be somebody that you're proud of, that you can be somebody that shines in, in the best moments and also in the moments that are really, really tough as well. You can be somebody consistent. You can be somebody disciplined. You can be somebody that you look at and year after year, you're making progress. I promise you, you can do that. And in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how. My name is June Yu. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. This is a problem that not is only only unique to you, but it's a problem that's unique to our entire generation, right? A part of it isn't necessarily our fault. This is the society that we've grown up in. It's filled with distractions. We've been handed a phone at a really early age, and we've never been taught how to utilize it properly. We've never been taught how to actually listen to our own thoughts. Like, If I ask you, when's the last time you actually sat with your own thoughts? Genuinely, where you didn't have any type of music on, a podcast on, you didn't have your phone with you, you weren't watching. You YouTube videos, like when was the last time you sat in silence and you could actually hear your own thoughts? I bet the answer to that is not very often. And that's a problem. If we're never able to actually speak to ourselves and understand that our own company is, is of the utmost importance so we can ask ourselves, what is it that really we want and then take action towards it? We're of course gonna live a lifestyle that isn't aligned with us. That makes sense, right? So good. I hope that you can enjoy this video. Give this video a thumbs up. Ask me any questions in the comments, I'd be happy to respond. And of course, subscribe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The first domain that I wanna speak on, it's going to be your mind. You have to understand that learning is the bridge between the life that you're living now and the life that you want to live, the dream lifestyle of yours. And that's what I'm going to categorize as equipping your mind. When you are a warrior that goes into battle, you need two things. You need to be equipped with the weapons to take on the world and then you also need to ensure that you are protected right so we're going to talk about being equipped and then also talk about being protected the equipment is your ability to learn new knowledge right your ability to go out there and actually hone in on the areas that you want to further develop in, you're going to realize that knowledge builds upon itself. That once you can start to take action into learning from different mediums that you prefer, whether it be mediums such as podcasts or mediums such as YouTube videos or mediums such as your books or mediums such as articles online, whatever those mediums are, you can start to pull from, extract from high quality resources. I don't mean popular resources. I mean high quality resources, credible resources, Resources, and you can learn every single day for at least 15 minutes a day, great things tend to happen, right? Because your learning start to compound. It's not just that the information that you learn one day that you're gonna have 15 minutes additional advancement the second 
day. But if you keep doing this for more and more time, you start to learn how to learn. You start to be able to compound the results of your original learnings. And that's when you start to see that exponential success. So if you can figure out what topic you want to learn about, and I suggest that you utilize this ability to leverage high value skills. So what high value skills are out there for you, right? All you have to do right now, is search up on Google high value skills in X domain, right? Whether it be in the um, industry of, let's say biomed, maybe you're another biomedical engineer like I am, you want to do something in the neurospace, right? Then you should learn high value skills that are associated with that discipline. And then perhaps you want to curate a personal brand, which I highly recommend you to do and build an online audience. You're gonna see that personal branding has many layers of high value skills from production and editing to actually curating new ideas, et cetera. And you're gonna start to realize that when you start to progress, that you start to formulate new ideas, right? Because when knowledge builds, you're gonna start to be able to be more creative with the ideas that you've built and then even curate new ones from there. So learning is absolutely essential and I want you to do that for at least 15 minutes a day. That's your mental win, okay? Now when we talk about protecting your mind, I truly mean callousing your mind. Let's be completely honest, we, are now in a society where potentially we're let off the hook a lot of times. We're told that we're perfect the way that we are, when in reality, we should be looking to be grateful for our current situation, absolutely, knowing that we're a human being and that we're going to make mistakes, but always knowing that we can make progress in areas, but we have to be honest with ourselves in that capacity. And in that, how can you start to protect your mind? How can you start to ensure that people's criticism of you isn't going to affect you? How can we ensure that people's thoughts of you isn't going to affect you? Well, there's an ability to carry confidence from the internal, right? And when you can equip your mind with the learning and then protect your mind by callousing it, great things happen. So how can you protect your mind? You start to put yourself in more and more difficult situations, right? You purposefully do uncomfortable things that you know is important for your growth. You don't like public speaking, go do more public speaking. You don't like networking, go do more networking. If you don't like your physics class, excel in your physics class. If you want to go ahead and watch Netflix all day and you buy into that type of feeling of yourself without any level of discipline, you're softening your mind, you're weakening your mind, you're taking away the protection from your mind so that when something hard in your life occurs, you can't overcome it because you have a weak mind, right? So if we're in this mental war on a day-to-day -day basis, if you can protect your mind while also ensuring that you're equipping it, great things happen. When you are equipping your mind for 15 minutes a day, that's fantastic. And then the challenge, like the protection of your mind is going to actually be sticking to this for 60 days, right? Because 60 days of trying to do a mental win along with the three other wins that we'll speak on, is gonna be really, 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 really challenging. You might think that 15 minutes is not a lot and then you try doing it over day and day and day and day where you don't necessarily have high senses of motivation. It gets really difficult. Do the challenge with me, uh, 60 days of the mental win and then we'll speak on the remaining three, okay? The second one is a physical win. So a physical win has ever everything to do with your ability to exercise, but also eat right, and then ensure that you're sleeping properly. So those three areas, if you can get in check, you have a great opportunity to be physically healthy. And why do we even care about the physical health? Well, a lot of my athletes will understand what I mean when I say this, but there are times where it's in the hot midst of summer and you're training with your team, and after a really long practice, you are out of breath, you're sweating, you can barely breathe, and the coach says, okay, another two mile, another three mile run, and you're like, coach, I have no idea how I'm gonna do that, I have no idea. And then you end up doing it, right? Because everyone else around you is doing it and you have this ability to have this mental fortitude to overcome the situation. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I pushed my mind that far. And in reality, your body follows your mind. If you can mentally make a decision and ensure that you don't give your body enough time to be complacent in where it is, and you can let your mind dictate how much progress you can make forward, your body will naturally follow. So that's why we start with a strong mind. Now in real life, you're gonna be alone most of the time, you're not gonna have an entire team to run that extra mile with you, but you have to make the decision to run that. And that's why that mental win comes first, but your physical win is your ability to follow suit with your mind. And your body, if you don't properly train it, if you don't properly provide it the nutrition, the fuel, if you don't 
properly provided the sleep, it won't recover, you won't be able to follow your mind for long. And longevity is the name of the game. That's how we build a legacy. Anyone can be successful for a month. Rarely can people be successful for a year. And definitely there's a very small fraction of people that can be successful year after year after year after year after year. That's why the physical win is so important. So I want you to spend 45 minutes moving your body. It does not have to be overly intense. I'm going to put this right out here. I don't care about what's optimal, right? If you're not training to be a bodybuilder or training to be a power lifter, who really cares, right? And those sports are incredible and I have a lot of friends in it and I think it's magnificent if that's your way of making money if that's your number one passion go for it but for me I want to ensure that I'm sharp mentally I want to ensure that my body can handle the difficulties and the trials and tribulations on a day-to-day -day basis so that I can excel in my business right so that I can excel in my relationships around me so that I can be the best version of myself all around and that's not going to happen if I'm spending three hours in the gym each day right realistic and so what I want you to know is that 45 minutes is more than doable and more than manageable, but it doesn't even have to be overly intense. In order to reap the physiological benefits, you don't have to be somebody there worrying about exactly which workouts you do every single day and to track every single little bit of progress. Get moving for 45 minutes, right? Just get moving, whether it's a walk, whether it's a run, whether it's you doing boxing, whether it's you doing jump roping. I don't necessarily care whatever you prefer, find that me medium of training and do it for 45 minutes daily. And you can always split this up throughout the day. So if you want to do a morning stretch of like 20 minutes on a recovery day, and then perhaps another 25 minutes of another maybe ab exercise, a little bit less intense later in the night, that's more than fine to be the total of your 45 minutes. And I see people really, really forget that there's strength training and there's audio cardiovascular training. And if you can't walk up a set of stairs without <laughs> losing your breath, like there's an issue there, right? And I used to be that person. Like I used to train a lot in terms of strength training, but I would neglect my cardiovascular side and I would struggle to go on hikes and stuff where my brother's wife is having a great time and she's she's fantastic, she can do the whole thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why can't I do this? And there's a reason because I'm not taking care of my heart, right? So doing some level of cardiovascular training, zone two would be a great idea for you. So now that that takes care of everything I wanna say with this, uh, the exercise portion, but. It, in terms of the ability to actually curate a physically healthy body, a lot of it has to do with nutrition. But also here too, you don't have to make this something so annoying or complex, right? Just being able to eat more whole foods, being more cognizant of the types of food that you're cooking with, doing more things like meal prepping so that you ensure that you're eating healthy throughout the week and not having to order out all the time. It's great for your financial savings and also your health. There's so many videos out there from people that really do this on a regular basis from nutritionists that provide incredible value. But I always say, now I'm very fortunate where I have now been in the position where I can order from Factor Meals, et cetera, and I've been really enjoying that the last few uh, weeks that I've had it because it just saves me so much time with cooking. But beforehand, it was just meal preps on Saturdays or Sundays, and I would just have that food for the remainder of the week. There are small things that you can do where it doesn't have to be so restrictive and just ensures that you're eating the right types of foods so that you can fuel your body to have the type of success that you want in other domains. And then when we talk about sleep, I can probably curate an entire video about how to have proper sleep, but even this, right? The idea that it's not just the amount of sleep that I find people really get caught up in this. They're like I sleep seven, eight hours and I and I and I feel bad or I'm not focused throughout my days. It's like what does the quality of sleep look like? Like when when's your caffeine cutoff time? Do you start to wind down? Like what are the things that you're doing to ensure that the neurochemicals are actually being released and being depleted at the right cadences throughout their day. Like what are the things that you're actually applying so that when you go to bed, you're fully tired and you can get that quality of sleep. And then when you wake up, how can you ensure that you are more alert and more focused, right? When you talk about sleep, it's really important that we do that. So yes, quantity of sleep is important. And actually research is not necessarily too clear on the amount specifically per person, but that, 70, that seven to nine hour range seems to be pretty much the across the board suggestion. And then how can you improve upon the quality of sleep and knowing that if you do this on a continuous basis, you're gonna have the three areas totally covered, what you eat, how you train, and also how you sleep. 
So that's your physical win. Just move your body for 45 minutes and you're gonna realize that a lot of these things tend to connect with each other. If you're moving your body, there's a good chance that you're much more cognizant of the things that you eat. And if you train, you're much more likely to be tired by the time that you go to bed. Number three, this is your spirit. It's your ability to have a spiritual win for 15 minutes daily. Now, when I say spiritual win, you might immediately jump to religion, right? And for me, it absolutely is my faith. It really is. And, I, and I've been very, very open about this. My faith is of the utmost priority for me. How can I glorify God through all the things that I do and enjoy him forever is, is my calling, right? But a spiritual win isn't necessarily religious and has to be that for every single person. Actually, a spiritual win is simply connecting to your purpose, right? And so there's ways of doing this and we talk about a step-by-step -step process in our mentorship program, but the idea that you should at least take some time to block out the noise around you. You know, in the very beginning, I was speaking on when's the last time that you actually sat in silence and step two would be hearing your own thoughts after you focus upon them. And then step three would be you exploring your purpose. And then step four would be actively connecting to your purpose. And then step five would be reviewing that purpose, right? Why do I keep saying that? Because if you don't ever think about the question, why am I doing this and actually respond honestly about it, you are in some mad trouble, right? If you're just constantly told what to do and in our society, it's so easy to go in this mental state of go, 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 and never even think about, huh, is this actually what I want? Or am I just being told that this is what I want? And being skeptical about that, right, is important. And when you can have that bigger overarching goal in life, your purpose, and you can connect to something bigger than yourself, what happens is that the day-to-day -day struggles mean something more, and it's a lot easier to overcome because your perspective changes and your perspective drives performance. The way that you view what you do affects how you do what you do. Inky Johnson says this all the time, and it's a great quote, but it starts with your purpose, right? What, why? What can you connect to that's bigger than you? Is it your family? Great. Is it your faith? Great. Is it nature? Great. Is it your ability to innovate? And there's literally people that their whole purpose is to create new things, right? They love that process. Is that the case? Whatever you think it is, explore upon that purpose. And then the fourth step where I said actively connect to it, actually spend the time to go out there and see if that's really your purpose, right? If I said my faith was really, really important to me, but I never read scripture, if I never actually engaged with my church community, if I didn't necessarily do missionary work in the past, like how would I actually know that that is what I say it is? Like, how would I know that that's my purpose if I don't actually think about it and reflect upon that emotion that comes out of it? I think it's so important that you actively connect to it. If you are somebody that really cares about your family, and you say that you should actively connect with them, right? And see the thoughts and the experiences and the emotions that come out of it. And when you can continuously do this day over day, where either you're spending 15 minutes of any part of those four sides, right? Or those four steps, or the fifth step of you analyzing and reviewing it, you're gonna start to further refine what your purpose is, right? And your purpose isn't something that's overnight, but it, you also shouldn't be somebody that when I ask you, why do you do what you do? You just sit there and like, huh? I was just told by my mom and dad, or I was just told by my teacher that this is the right thing to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You should have a, a sense of belonging. You should have a sense of at least some sort of idea that this is where you wanna be headed. And that can become its own evolutionary process, right? But when you can ask yourself that hard hitting question, although it's really, really challenging to sit in that discomfort, because it is very, very uncomfortable to ask yourself, like why, if you've never done that before, it means so much in your future, right? The, the return on your investment, if we're speaking that term, is ginormous. It, it, it goes to talk, speak on the human natural behavior of us wanting to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And that's really, really important. If you do everything for yourself, trust me when I say that life is gonna quickly hand something that's much bigger than you, and you're not gonna be able to overcome it. So do your 15 minutes of a spiritual win. Number four is your honest accountability. And this should also be done for 15 minutes. I'm gonna tell you an exact way to do this, journaling, okay? Journaling is one of the greatest ways to do this. You create distance between you and your thoughts. You're better able to rationalize with your own thoughts. Like for example, instead of just going out and complaining to your quote unquote best friend or your coworker about X, Y, and Z and how miserable your life is, like take a moment and actually think about it, right? Because that energy tends to affect other people. And sometimes when you're in the midst of all this 
chaos internally, it's hard for you to word it the right way. And if you don't actually have a safe place to do this in, then other people might take it the wrong way and it might actually make you in the moment realize, wait, that's not what I meant to say. Instead, if you can actually take the time to journal first and start to rationalize with your thoughts and write things down, you're like, oh wait, that mental chaos became a little bit clearer to me. Wait, I'm actually starting to understand my emotion and my thoughts behind it. And actually you might come out of being like, oh wait, that made no progress, but that's okay too, because you took that initial step to, to get it out on paper. Paper. And it's so much better than, again, just going out and just saying the things on your mind without necessarily thinking about it and without rationalizing with yourself through journaling. And I want to actually utilize some prompts to help you and what you should do for journaling because I know that you guys might be new to this. And journaling is pretty darn simple. There's ways to do it with a prompt and there's ways to do it with free writing. If you're just starting out, probably prompts are going to be your best bet. And actually, in fact, even if you're on a regular basis, you want to do free writing, it's good to have prompts whenever you're feeling a little bit low and you don't have that creative juice to think about what you want to write. The first thing I want you to journal about is gratitude, right? What are the things that you are grateful for in the moment? Now, not the things that you want to have, but the things that you already have. What gratitude does, it, it curates this protection on your own mind. It, it curates a protection on you. And when you go out into the world, negativity doesn't seep through as it would otherwise, right? When you can be grateful for the things that you have, it makes you just a happier person. So start with gratitude. And it's important, again, to kind of keep ourselves humble. And when we're always looking to progress and always looking to say, oh, I want X and Y and Z more, you start to forget that you have a lot of great things in front of you. Step two, identify two strengths. Identify two strengths that you can continue to build upon. These don't have to be magnificent each day, but you should recognize the things that you are doing well. And there are things that you're doing well. Maybe you spent less time on your phone today. Maybe you actually spent time studying today. Maybe you actually formed a friendship today. Maybe you actually reached out to your family today. There's strengths in it, that we do on a daily basis that we tend to neglect and forget. And the reason why I say that this is so important to actually write down for yourself over a long span of time is that we're such our own critics that we forget the progress that we've made up to that point. And it's exactly why the personal trainers will have their clients take progress photos. It's because when you're in the midst of the day to day, you forget the progress that you've made and that can be extremely demotivating. But on days where you're like, wait, let me just see where I started. And you look at it and you're like, wow, I actually have made a lot of progress because this is an accumulation of my strengths. It's an important thing to do. Number three, the journaling prompt that I think about is what is one weakness that I can improve upon? And being really honest about this is incredibly important, right? We all have weaknesses. And even on your best days, you're going to have a weakness because you're a human being. If you run away from that weakness, you will never make progress. You will never further develop in that area. And that's an issue. You should be the one. Nobody else should need to do this for you. You have to be honest with yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and like, man, I sucked at X, Y, and Z today, like genuinely, right? There's a lot of moments that I did that. I sucked at a lot of things yesterday. Did I make progress? Sure. But did I suck in my ability to be more as productive as I would have liked? Yes. Did I suck in the sense where the nap that I took later in the afternoon actually bled into way longer than the 30 minutes that I intended and that impacted not only my schedule, but my team's schedule? Yes. Did I suck in not being more proactive in my apartment search hunt where now I'm gonna be outside of my own state for a little bit of time and now I, I am about to have my lease ending soon. Like there are certain weaknesses that you can reflect upon. And then I think about the weaknesses even in just how I viewed it. Like what are there moments where I lacked gratitude? Were there moments in which I lacked professionalism? Were there moments in which I lacked the ability to have optimism? Like there were definitely moments like that. And not every single day will you have this accumulation of weaknesses. That's not what I mean, but you should be able to pinpoint one area that you can improve upon and then tell yourself how you can improve upon that, right? So if I just said simply, hey, my weakness today was that I was late to my meetings, right? Like my own team's meetings, I got delayed in one of them and then got moved into the next. And that's all I wrote, that's the problem. Instead, I should think about from an engineering standpoint, like, okay, what caused that problem and what can I do better to uh, ensure that that doesn't happen again? Because I try to respect my team's time. Well, if I'm being very honest, it's like, well, I could have probably done a better job not booking meetings back to back with just 30 minute calls, right? Like I probably should have had some sort of barrier or fluff in between each of those meetings so that I had the time to transition from one to another. Like how likely is it that I'm gonna be in one call immediately ended and again to another call 
in literally zero seconds. Not very likely, right? Having an opportunity to better curate a schedule that works for me and my team is a, is a good idea. So that's your one weakness. And I think it's really important that you do it upon it in that light. And now what I wanna do actually here is list off a few writing prompts and we're gonna have them on the screen that you should follow. You don't have to do every single one each day, but it's a really great way to target some areas that you can improve upon as well. I'm gonna share that right now. What fears or insecurities am I reluctant to confront? What limiting beliefs about myself am I holding on to? What aspects of my life do I feel are out of my control and how can I regain control? What would my life look like if I took full control for my choices and actions? And what is the current status of my other internal pillars? How am I feeling about my mind, my body, and my spirit? Am I being consistent with my daily wins? Those are some excellent prompts for you to then answer, right? And if you just choose one, that's fine. While ensuring that you do the gratitude, your strengths and your weaknesses, that's a great way to journal on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be complex. It's pretty simple. And you don't necessarily have to spend any more time than 15 minutes. 15 minutes is a good amount of time for you to get into your thoughts, to write them out and have separation between you and your thoughts and have an honest accountability system. We have a mentorship program where for 60 days, everyone in the program initiates this challenge where they do a mental win, a physical win, a spiritual win, an honest accountability win. Many of you know it as as June's four wins. And it's been an incredibly empowering moment for all of us to see each other within this community. And I really encourage you to join if you'd like. Um, and this speaks to you on a deeper level and you wanna ensure that you have a community backing you and supporting you while also teaching you some of the other areas of life in terms of your external successes. When I talk about excelling in your business or excelling in your academics or excelling in your early career building or excelling in your networking or your productivity, we teach those things as well. But the fundamentals are those four wins and we would love to to have you inside. With that being said, that covers the four domains, the four pillars that I believe if you can put energy towards on a daily basis, you're gonna find that focus and clarity that you've been lacking. You're gonna stop procrastinating on your goals. You're gonna have an opportunity to really strengthen your internal foundation so you can be the type of person to seek out opportunity, capitalize on them, and even continuously maintain your progress or your momentum moving forward. That's the type of person I want you to be I want you to stop feeling lost. And I really do think that there's power in these four wins. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below with any questions that you have. I know it was a little bit of a longer one, but thank you for sticking around. Give this video a thumbs up and of course, subscribe. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and I will see you all at the top.